What's up YouTube? How's it going? It's Razzles again, back with another video on MX Bikes. I want to start this one off by saying thank you to everyone who gave me the feedback on the last videos. I really enjoyed actually talking uh, with some of you guys, helping you out in the comments and seeing all the likes uh, that I got on those videos and it actually made me feel like I was providing some sort of value to you guys and that's why I started this channel. Um, I wanted to bring things that you know could help you benefit in, in ways that i never really had coming into mx bikes and i'm starting to see that it's it's helping you guys and i really am pretty stoked on that so with that being said we're going to do another video today and as you can see by looking around the box that i am in right now uh you can see that i'm in a stadium and this video is going to be a little controversial because i'm not too good at supercross but i'm going to teach you guys my methods of going somewhat fast in supercross and also show you why you are probably making mistakes and talk a little bit about um how you can fix that so without further ado let's just get into the video having rhythm in supercross on mx spikes is not easy it's actually probably one of the hardest things that you can do in this game and it is definitely frustrating enough to make you want to just not even play anymore so by now you're probably starting to pick up nationals pretty good and you're starting to you know figure out your setups and figure out your leaning and then you're like well why don't we take it indoors and see what we can do well you probably found out that it's a little bit harder so in this video let's talk about what can help you some of the tricks that i have found is that it's actually better to be slower even though the slow physics in this game are kind of tough than to try and rush through everything Letting off the throttle and letting the bike kind of do its thing is super helpful in Supercross. Also, with that being said, standing and sitting is a huge part of Supercross. And we'll also talk about that uh, a little bit later in this video as well. And then also, before we get started, don't get too frustrated while playing Supercross. Because it doesn't matter how fast you are, you still will eat crap. I don't care who you are, you'll go down. Um, if you don't, then please let me know how, because I am struggling to stay up. <laughs> so let's get uh, into the kind of meat and potatoes of this video. All right, guys. Well, to kick things off, let's just talk about kind of being patient. Being patient in Supercross is probably one of the, if not the most important thing. Everybody wants to go super fast and everybody wants to hammer down. But here's the problem with that. You have to have timing in Supercross because if you case something just slightly or if you OJ something, OJ overjump something by even like a wheel length, there's a good chance that you're going to go down. So my suggestion is, is when you're riding to make sure that you're kind of, you know, easing off the throttle or, you know, setting yourself up for success by slowing down before a jump that you know you're not going to be able to clear and just doubling instead of tripling. Uh, to give you an example, that'll show you right now. So for example, I messed up that section right there and I know I'm not going to triple in. No sense in trying to triple in when I can just go double, double, double. What that does is that keeps me on two wheels and I'm not wasting another five, you know, six seconds uh, trying to get back up and like looping out on the face of a jump. Another example is right here. So I like to come out of this corner and go double three but I kind of messed up and didn't have a good drive. No reason to go three and go down right there in the center. I just kind of let up a little bit and just let the double come to me. And here I am going through the next section when I would be down over there to my left. Also going with being patient is something like wall jumps right here. Most people will go over to that wall jump and kind of sky it or try to come up to it and stay real low. What happens whenever you try to sky this jump is this kind of turn into a pancake in the middle of the start straight. Now, there are times when you can sky it and land. You gotta have the rear wheel down first and lean forward. But it's really hard to do that consistently, so try not to do that, guys. But if you can get it consistently, then keep doing it. But as you notice while I'm riding right now, I'm not really super hard on the throttle. I'm kind of being easy. One of the only times you'll see me really ringing it out is through the whoops and then after I land on the uh, wall jump after this finish here. 
Let's see if I can get a good drive through here. So that was not a bad run right there. And then I tucked the front end going in because I was trying to be fast for you guys. So now that we talked about being patient in Supercross, we're going to talk about, you know, tying that patience and that, that being easy on the throttle type of riding into a wall jump. Wall jumps in this game, and especially in Supercross, if you haven't rode it or if you have rode it, you definitely will notice that they are a pain in the butt. So my way of going over wall jumps, especially this one here at Tampa SX, is by making sure that you come into it and you're going straight at it. And then I actually ride the rear brake going up. It drops my front end over and then I can lean forward while sitting down and get the traction down. That's if I don't decide to do the uh, just huck it mentality, um, full send to landing, leaning forward down halfway down the starting straight method. Uh, let's see if I can do it a couple times for you guys. So I'm coming through the corner and I'm gonna set up straight at it and I'm gonna hold the rear brake and then get back on it. Notice how when I'm coming up to the wall jump right here, I'm going straight at it and then I'm gonna drop my front end. It's really hard to keep your front end down on wall jumps. Unless you have a specific setup that works best for you to be able to keep it down. Other than that, I suggest trying the rear brake method like this. Let's take one more look with follow cam. So I know that it doesn't really seem super fast to be able to come up to the wall and pretty much come to a complete stop, but in all reality, in real life, how often do you see you guys really launching walls to flat, at least like that? Um, this jump isn't super big, but since you're coming out of a corner, it is really frustrating to come out of the corner and be on a slight angle and just get all gnarly and like scrub it and just go down. Uh, when I play online, I see people down on this wall jump all the time. And my way around that is by coming up straight at it, holding the rear brake while going up. Don't turn at all. As soon as you get over the wall, hold forward, stay sitting down and just hammer through the gear, uh, the gearbox all the way down to the next corner. So with that being said, let's talk about standing and sitting in Supercross. Now in outdoors, you can kind of stand and sit when you want, or like whatever works best for you for traction reasons, uh, because you don't really have a super amount of like uh, low speed kickers, I guess, because when you're going faster, you can kind of control it a little more because everybody knows that the slow speed in this game is tough, which is why Supercross is so tough because it's bouncy, it's wobbly, and it's just hard to stay on two wheels in this game. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to stand and sit to benefit you while going through rhythm sections for sure. When going through the rhythm section, it's kind of weird how often you stay sitting or how often you stay standing. Uh, when you look at my riders like positioning right here, you're going to notice how I'm like standing and sitting to like get pop over jumps. Sitting through corners and then standing up the face is pretty much the equivalent of seat bouncing. And then sitting whenever you land sets you up for the next jump. An example of where I would stay sitting when landing is right here off of this triple. If I can clear it just right, it sets me up for this triple triple right here. As you can see guys, it is extremely hard to do the sitting technique. So in all reality, staying standing on uh, hard impacts like that is probably the best way to go in Supercross. Sitting and standing in the middle of a rhythm section uh, can dictate whether or not you get that massive triple or quad that you wanna do, or if you just want to just do a double or soak something up and scrub a little bit. Now, scrubbing mid rhythm section in Supercross is probably not the best idea. Doing anything sideways in Supercross is, is tough in general, unless you're hitting a Supercross triple or a finish line. So uh, let's kind of go into more detail of what I mean by that. So for example, most people are gonna come over this double right here and stay sitting and then stand up right here to get this triple. This section isn't too bad once you get the entry, not too bad. But the next section right here, there's a big line where you can go outside and then quad, and then you single out. Notice how I had my front end up a little bit, but I still ended up making it through there, so it worked out in my favor. Pulling this three in quad is one of the most satisfying things in the game to do. Notice how when I'm coming through here, I stand up, but then I sit back down. What that does is that brings my back tire over that section of the tabletop, I guess, to be able to make me get into the pocket to be able to then do the quad out by standing up and seat bouncing. Watching that again and even super slow-mo, 
right here, sit down, drops the front end and brings the tire just over that table and then standing on the face again to get that little springboard pop. I should have sat down again in the air to bring my front tire down again, but it's all good. I ended up still making the quad. Now let's watch it again in full speed. By utilizing the standing and sitting is how you can just barely get over tabletops like that. If you noticed how whenever I springboarded myself up by seat bouncing the first one, but then I immediately sat back down, it dropped my front end and brought my rear tire just over the knuckle of that first tabletop, putting me in the pocket. When I landed sitting down perfectly in that pocket, it didn't make me wobble or anything because I had such a good momentum down to that pocket that I stood up again and it was the equivalent of a seat bounce in this game and it put me over that massive quad in the center of that section. Uh, that, that line is not easy to do, but with this technique, I promise you that if you practice enough and you figure out how fast you have to go into that first triple, you'll get it in no time. I'm on a 250F right now. So if you're on a 450, who knows if you do it right, you might be able to five into the corner, but <laughs> good luck making the corner after that one, guys. So we've talked about being patient, Supercross. We've talked about how <laughs> don't really get frustrated because it's super tough. We talked about standing and sitting and how there's different techniques you can use with that. Uh, it's all about throttle control as well. Trying to make sure that you're not being too antsy in this one because honestly going slower is faster. As you saw with the technique that we used over the wall jump, I personally think that that's the best way to get through. So I've showed you a few different tricks that might help you in Supercross. Uh, they've definitely helped me a lot. Um, it's also about having a setup, having a little bit stiffer suspension to be able to get over some of the jumps, but I don't have a suspension setup that works super good for me and I have heard different things. So unfortunately I don't have any insight to give you on that one guys, but if I do figure something out, I will make a video on it. I promise because uh, having a good setup in this game is pretty much paramount. But uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go into the last thing and the one thing that a lot of people are complaining about in this game. Not really complaining about, but are having troubles with, but it's the whoops. Now, the whoops on Tampa are some of the easiest whoops in the game. So they actually are good starter, um, starter whoops to kind of get the technique down. Uh, another track that has a little bit better whoops, they're, they're still, they're a little bit more technical, but you can still get through them with this technique is St. Louis 2, the race edition. So, um, after you watch this video, maybe try these out on St. Louis 2 or even this track to be able to see I can get through them. When coming up to the whoops, you want to make sure that you enter them straight. Entering the whoops straight is going to put you in a situation where you're not going to get swaps. An example of when you don't enter the whoops straight is something like this. <laughs> I mean, that's the last thing that you want to have happen, guys. Now that you're starting to come into the whoop section straight, let's talk about shifting up the gears. I shifted up to third right there to make sure that I had the RPMs a little bit lower lugging in. Came in a little bit sideways, but somehow managed to pull it off. Now that we're starting to practice cutting down in the corner and entering the whoop straight, let's talk about going through the corner and how you want to set yourself up coming up to the whoops. Coming up to the corner, you want to roll into the corner off the throttle, shift up to third, and then cut down in so that way you're facing straight at the whoops. When you're going to enter into the whoops, if you can click up to fourth, that is probably best. So that way when you're rolling through, you're not kind of ramming, like, you know, slamming through third gear, just tap. You can actually get some more traction and carry a lot more momentum, just like you would in real life. Let's see if we can do it right here. With that not being too bad of a run through the whoops, we're gonna talk about it here in the editor. So it wasn't the fastest way through the whoops, but it was a smooth set. So right here, I'm shifting up to third, clicking fourth, and then as I hit the first whoop, I stand up. When I'm coming through, I'm kind of keeping my body position neutral. If I lean back a little bit too far, I might skip a whoop, almost like I did right there, but I was able to stay on top and get to the finish line actually pretty straight and set myself up for the next lap taking it even slower. So we just came through, we're hitting third. We see the start of the whoops, so we click fourth. Right here, we're, as soon as the bike stands up, we're gonna stand up. If we realize that both tires are hitting both the tops of the whoops, then we're doing okay. 
we start to get a little bit of a skip. So right here is where you would start to correct. If you hit the front end too hard, just lean forward a little bit and then continue to lean back. One last look at it from the follow perspective. So now you guys get the general gist of, you know, how to get into the whoops and be able to get through them. Uh, one thing I didn't bring up in that little excerpt right there is that once you start in the whoops, don't turn. If you start turning at all, you're going to start getting the swaps and you're probably going to go down. The best thing you can do is make sure that you set yourself up for the whoops in the corner first. Even if you don't get to fourth gear and hell, I mean, even if you're in second gear, start hitting the whoops and just don't turn. When you start to turn, you're going to go down, and this game does not support turning in the whoops like all the other games that you've probably played. Uh, MX Sim dudes probably understand as well, but if you're coming from arcade games, you can't turn in whoops like this or like you can in the other games. So my suggestion is to just enter the whoops straight, uh, third or fourth gear, fourth gear preferably, and just kind of just use the right stick if you lean with the right stick, you know, forward and back, or whatever stick you use to pitch your rider forward and backwards to keep on top of the whoops. If you can hit every single whoop with your front, then your rear tire, and just teeter-totter back and forth with your weight neutral, then you're going to get through the whoops just fine. Start on these whoops, move your way to St. Louis, and then eventually work your way to even harder set of whoops on different tracks. Um, that being said, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I'm going to end this one off with a little bit of raw gameplay. Uh, I really appreciate you guys all coming through, and if you want to check me out, uh, live, I stream at least three days a week on twitch.tv forward slash razzles126. You can come in there and ask me some questions and just hang out and watch uh, some MX bikes just real time and watch me probably crash more than I should. So other than that, thank you guys so much for the support and drop a like on this video and make sure you subscribe. Take it easy, guys. Peace out.